have watched the Premier League for a long period of time, and if there's something that I have learned, is never ever write off a champion team like Man City. Never write it off. So hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Football with Priscilla. I am Priscilla, obviously. So hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I just want us to talk about the title race, which has had a lot of twists and turns. But before we get into the video for today, make sure you share, like, and subscribe. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe, and do turn your notifications on to know when next I post the video. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we can get into the video for today, I just want to give a comment shout out to Matthias Eugene Kashkite for his comment in my previous video. So much as Eugene Kashkite, thank you so much for his comment. And now let's get into the video for today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the title race is heating up. It's December, there are a lot of twists and turns. We have Arsenal beating Luton Town 4-3 towards the end of the game. I think at the end of the game, we have Liverpool beating Sheffield 2-0 and we have Man City losing to Aston Villa. Now listen, we're going to talk about Arsenal versus Luton Town. Ladies and gentlemen, the way Arsenal has been pushing towards the end, scoring towards the end, refusing to accept defeat, is Arsenal showing us champions' mentality? Like, should we actually consider Arsenal as serious title contenders i know every time yes we, we mention them but we always know like oh obviously they're going to lose but there's something different about arsenal this time they are resilient they are not going down without a fight and they are getting the results most importantly so what are we saying ladies and gentlemen should we now actually take arsenal serious because a title winning team will do what arsenal did towards the end of the game 3-3 versus Luton Town. I'm telling my brother who's an Arsenal fan, it's over. You guys have dropped points. My brother is saying, okay, towards the end, he's busy saying, all oh, Odega, just kick the boy into the penalty box. You don't know who's going to manage to get a header in. You might get a penalty. Someone might have a handball shout out. Just do it. And before you know it, ladies and gentlemen, I'm seated on my couch like this because Arsenal have scored a goal with Declan Rice. And can I just say, it hurts my soul. Not even my heart. My soul, the fact that Manchester United could have bought a player like Declan Rice but refused to remove the money, it hurts me so much. So ladies and gentlemen, seeing Arsenal do that on not one but countless of occasions, refusing to give up points, refusing to drop points, should we be looking at Arsenal and be going like, you know what, they have a serious shout out for the title. And I hate to say this because I don't like Arsenal. I don't rate Arsenal. But they do. They have a say in this title race. If anyone's going to look at Arsenal and say, hmm, they're not, they don't have a shout out, then I don't know what's wrong with you. The way they are playing, the way they are being resilient, and the way they are refusing to drop points, and the way they are fighting towards the end whatsoever says otherwise. They do want to be title challengers, and they are serious. Now, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, for me, Arsenal, I always, um, yes, they can make a case towards the title, but it always boils down to this for Arsenal, squad depth. Do Arsenal have enough squad depth to go up to the end of the season? We've noticed in so many games, Bakayo Saka is always playing, when Odegaard is fit, he's always playing, Martinelli is always playing, uh, Gabriel is always playing, Saliba is always playing. Right now, the only people that they are changing mostly is the goalkeeper. Declan Rice is always playing. Now, Arsenal are in, is it um, the UEFA Champions League? They have the Premier League. They have the FA Cup coming up next year. So, do they have the squad depth to still be in the Champions League? Push for the title. Like, do they have that mentality? And this is where I put question marks all the time for Arsenal. Yes, they may be good. Yes, they may be getting the results. But do they have the squad depth and the mentality to push on towards the end? We saw last season that what brought Arsenal down was the fact that they didn't have the squad depth and the mentality wasn't there. The champions mentality wasn't there. They got tired and fatigued towards the end of the game. Uh, Saka was so tired, Martinelli was tired, Odegaard was tired, they couldn't keep up with the likes of Man City. So for me, that's the biggest um, question mark I have on Arsenal. Do they have the squad depth and do they have the mentality to go and challenge and win the Premier League despite being in three competitions? Do they? I don't know. Comment down in the comment section what you think. 
the next game that I want to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, is obviously Liverpool versus uh, Sheffield. Now, I don't even know why I try supporting teams like Sheffield against Liverpool. I really try. I always hope that they will shock me, but they never do, really. So this result wasn't shocking. I was expecting it. But then it's very interesting because we're talking about Arsenal, right? And we're talking about how they are showing champions mentality. Well, Liverpool is doing the same thing. Liverpool is right behind them and Liverpool is not dropping points. When you look at Liverpool's squad and Arsenal's squad, which team has more quality? Let's just be honest. It's Liverpool. So if I'm Arsenal, I'm on the top, but I'm looking behind my shoulder and I'm like, mm, Liverpool is coming. Like Liverpool beat Sheffield, granted it wasn't a clean win, it wasn't those easy games where they ran through, Sheffield no, they had to play Sheffield, like they had to play dig deep, deep to get the 2 new, but they still won. When you have the likes of Zlobosly, you have the likes of Trent Alexander-Arnold, you have the likes of um, Robertson, you have Salah up front, you have Diaz, you have Virgil van Dijk, the quality is immense. Like that team is dripping with quality. So, in as much as we're saying Arsenal might win it, Liverpool has a huge shout out as well. And Liverpool does have the squad depth. Need I remind you, they do also have the champions mentality because this is a team that went head to head with Man City when the, when the league ended, I think, with one point. So, if I'm Arsenal, I'm thinking, yes, we can do this, but Liverpool is right at the back. Unless Liverpool just go crazy and that a dropping points it's going to be a tough title race if you're arsenal you want to stay at the top and you know go for the premier league it's going to be tough because you have teams like liverpool right around the corner right so ladies and gentlemen liverpool as much as arsenal do have a shout out for the title now do you think liverpool have a bigger shout out for the title than arsenal i don't know comment down in the comment section what do you guys think the last team that i want us to talk about ladies and gentlemen is man city versus aston villa one thing about man city ladies and gentlemen is we cannot ever remove them from the conversation about the title you can't because listen we have seen this script before man city december and number three number four number five man city april are running with the premier league and we're all like well we knew this was going to happen, so we can't write Man City off. We can have these titles of, oh, are Man City in still in the title race? Where Are they as good as they were? What's Man City's problem? We can have them in our thumb news, ETC. But the truth of the fact is we've seen this before. Man City can be way behind in December. Come April, it's a whole different conversation. Now, obviously, Man City lost to Aston Villa. I'm going to say this. I've been saying this for a long period of time. Man City's defense this season has been horrible. I don't know if it's their midfield. They um, have also been missing good gun. I feel like, yes, their defense has been horrible, but their midfield is also lacking. I feel like good gun brought in something different for Man City. And now him not being there, we've seen a gap. Bernardo Silva, an amazing player. Rodri, an amazing player. Kovacic, an amazing player. De, uh, De Bruyne, an amazing player, but obviously De Bruyne is injured. Good gun brought in goals for Man City, and they are missing those good gun goals. So, listen, Man City for me, like I've been saying, I'm not convinced with their midfield, and I'm not convinced with their defense this season. Maybe Bernardo Silva is getting older and tired. Rodri, I think, is still good, but... They have to fix their midfield. Their defense, I'm very, like, there's something disappointing about Virgil. He had so much hype around him. But, and I thought, okay, Man City's defense is going to be solid about Virgil. But, like, I don't see. They've got Ake. I, I don't see it, right? They've got Walker. It, it just hasn't been working well for them. But still a good team and still quality. Now, why, why we don't write Man City off is the squad depth right? Pep Guardiola will just have an idea, rotate players, and all of a sudden, the machine is working again. This is why we can have Man City dropping points in December. They have the luxury to drop points in December. They still manage to be called the Premier League champion somewhere by May, right? Because of the squad depth. And not only the squad depth, the mentality that they have. Man City won't panic that they're on number three or going on number four. That depends on Tottenham's results, right? It, 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 it won't 
um, change anything that Manchester United is right behind them, that Tottenham is right behind them, they won't panic because they know they have the quality. Man City is dripping with quality all the time. So we can't write Man City off. It's all fun and games until Kevin De Bruyne is back, Rodri is back, Doku is on form, Haaland is on form, Alvarez is on form, Foden is on form, Grealish is on form. Have you, have you heard all those names that I've mentioned? Quality. And then we're all seated like we expected this. So ladies and gentlemen, those are the three teams that are obviously in the title race. We have Arsenal, Liverpool and Man City. Each team equally have a huge shout out and justifiably so. They are good teams. Obviously, we can see Arsenal is leading the pack right now, but Liverpool is right behind the corner and Man City can be written off because they are Man City. They have been there. They keep on doing this all the time. So it's an interesting title race, ladies and gentlemen. For me, I'm going to say let's not write any of these three off. I have watched the Premier League for a long period of time and if there's something that I have learned is never, ever write off a champion team like Man City. Never write it off. Because December, they might be poor. April, they might be the best team in the world. So ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be, and it still is, an interesting title race. Do comment down in the comment section who you guys think will actually win it. Do you think Arsenal will surprise us this year and actually finish strong? Do you think Liverpool will overtake Arsenal and be the winners of the Premier League? Or do you think it's still Man City's, even if we are in December? But yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, it is very interesting. We have an interesting title race on our hands. So yeah, so that's all I had for you guys today. Thank you so much guys for watching. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe. And do turn your notifications on to know when next I post a video. Bye.